the silver saucer and the rosy cheeked apple. Once upon a time there lived an old man and an old woman, and they had three daughters. The two elder daughters liked to dress up in fancy clothes and to play games and make merry. But the younger daughter was quiet and modest in all her ways. The elder daughters wore bright flowered sarafans and gilded beds and boots with high carved heels. But Marsha's gowns were as dark as her eyes were light and clear. Her one beauty was her hair, which fell to the ground in a golden plate and brushed the flowers that grew in her path as she walked. The elder daughters were lazy and sat about doing nothing like two grand ladies. But Masha was busy around the house and in the field and garden from morning till night. She would weed the vegetables and chop firewood for splinters to lie the house with and milk the cows and feed the ducks. A person had only to ask and Masha would come running to bring whatever it was he wanted. Never would she cross anyone by so much as a word, and she was always ready to do everyone's bidding. Her sisters would order her about and make her do their chorus for them, and she would do them and say nothing. And so it went. One day the old man made ready to take some hay to market, and he promised to bring back gifts for his daughters, said the first daughter. Buy me a length of blue silk for a sarafan, father, said the second daughter. Buy me a length of red velvet. But Masha said nothing. The old man took pity on her. What shall I buy for you, Masha, my child? he asked her. Well, father dear, I should like a rosy-cheeked apple and a silver saucer. At this, Masha's sister burst out laughing and they laughed so hard that they all but split their sides. What a little fool you are, Masha! they cried. Why, we have a whole orchard of apples. You can pick any you please. And as for the saucer, what do you need it for to feed the ducklings? No, sisters, dear, I will roll the apple over the saucer and say magic words over it. An old beggar woman taught me them for giving her a collage. At that they laughed harder than ever, and the old man said to them, Now that's enough, I won't have you laughing at your sister, and I will bring all of your gifts after your own hearts. Whether he went far or near, and whether he was long way or not, no one knows. But the old man sold his hay, and he bought his three daughters their gifts. To the first daughter he brought a length of blue silk, to the second daughter a length of red velvet, and to Masha a silver saucer and a rosy-cheeked apple. The two elder sisters were overjoyed. They set to making their sarafans, and they laughed at Masha. Sit there with your apple, you little fool, said they to her. And Masha sat down in a corner of the hut. She rolled her rosy-cheeked apple over her silver saucer and she began to sing and chant. Roll, roll, rosy apple, over the silver saucer. Show me towns and leaves, show me forests and seas. Show me mountains high and the blue, blue sky. Show me all of us, of my own dear land. All of a sudden there came a ringing as of bells and the whole hut was flooded with light. Over the silver saucer rolled the rosy-cheeked apple, and on the saucer, as clear as in real life, there appeared towns and vales, hills and dales, soldiers in the fields with swords and shields, grassy lips, shapes on the seas, mountains high, and the blue, blue sky. In the sky the bright sun sailed after the pale moon, and the stars danced in a ring, and on the lakes the swans sang their songs. The sisters looked and turned green with envy.
The only thought now was to find a way of whittling the saucer and apple out of Masha. But Masha wanted nothing, would take nothing and went on playing with her apple and saucer every evening. One day the sisters decided to lure her into the forest and they said to Masha, Come, dear heart, come, sweet sister, let us go gathering berries in the forest. We'll bring back some wild strawberries for mother and father. They went to the forest, but there were no berries to be seen anywhere. Masha took out her silver saucer, rolled her rosy-cheeked apple over it and said in a sing-song voice. Roll, rosy apple, over the silver saucer. Roll and show me where the wild strawberries are growing and the sky-blue flowers are blooming. All at once there came a pealing of bells. The rosy-cheeked apple rolled over the silver saucer and on the saucer, as clear as in real life, the forest and all its secret nooks appeared. The glades where the wild strawberries grew, the sky blue flowers bloomed, the mushrooms hid, and the springs gushed, and the lakes where the swan sang. And the Masha's two mean hearted sisters watched and were filled with such envy that their sight grew dim. They caught up a knobby stick and they killed Masha with it. They buried her underneath a birch tree and took the silver saucer and rosy-cheeked apple for themselves. It was evening by the time they reached home, bringing baskets full of mushrooms and berries, and they said to their mother and father, Masha ran away from us and got lost. We looked all over the forest but couldn't find her. The wolves must have eaten her up in the thicket. The mother burst into tears and father said, Roll the apple over the saucer and perhaps it will show us where our Masha is. The sisters turned cold with fear, but they had to do as their father bade. They rolled the apple over the saucer, but the apple wouldn't roll, and the saucer wouldn't spin, and there was nothing to be seen on it. Neither forests nor fields, neither mountains high nor the blue, blue sky. Now, at that very time and hour, a young shepherd was out in the forest looking for a sheep that had strayed away from the flock. And he came upon a white birch tree with a freshly heaped mound of turf beneath it and sky blue flowers growing all around. Shooting up amongst the flowers were some long slender reeds. The shepherd cut himself a reed and made a pipe out of it. But no sooner had he brought the pipe to his lips than it began to play of itself and to sing out. Play, pipe, play for the shepherd to hear. Sweet songs and gay, the shepherd to cheer. As for me, poor lass, they killed me, alas, for a silver saucer, for a rosy-cheeked apple. The shepherd was frightened, and he ran straight to the village and told to the villagers all about it. And they gathered round to hear him and gasped in horror. Masha's father, too, came running up. And the moment he picked up the pipe, it started playing of itself and singing. Play, pipe, play for my father to hear, sweet songs and gay, my father to cheer. As for me, poor lass, they killed me, alas, for a silver saucer, for a rosy-cheeked apple. The father began to weep. Take us to where you cut the reed for your pipe, shepherd, he said. The shepherd led them to the mound in the forest, and there were sky blue flowers growing beneath the birch tree, and Tom put its perching on its boughs and singing away. They dug up the mound, and there beneath it lay Masha, dead, but looking more beautiful than ever. She seemed to be asleep, poor maid, for on her cheeks the roses played, and the pipe went on playing and singing. Play, pipe, play, said songs and gay. Listen, father, to what I say. 
By my sisters was I to the forest taken, by my sisters was I in the forest slain. Play, pipe, play, sad songs and gay. Listen, father, to what I say. If you wish to see me alive and well, fetch some crystal water from the Tsar's own well. At this, Masha's two black hearted sisters trembled and turned pale. They fell on their knees and confessed their crime. And they were put away behind locks of iron to await the Tsar's orders, his high decree. The old man made ready and set off for the Tsar's city to fetch the living water. Whether a long time passed by or a little time, nobody knows. But he finally reached the Tsar's city and came to the Tsar's palace just as the Tsar was coming down from his porch of gold. The old man bowed to the ground and told the Tsar all about everything. Said the Tsar, You may take some living water from my well, old man, and when your daughter comes to life, bring her to me together with the two vipers, her sisters. And mind, she doesn't forget to take along her silver saucer and rosy-cheeked apple. The old man was overjoyed and bowed to the ground again many times, and he took home with him a file of the living water. No sooner had he sprayed Masha with the living water than she came alive again and clung to him as tenderly as a dove. The people came running up and they rejoiced in the sight. And now the old man set off again for the Tsar's city with his three daughters. He arrived there in due time and was led into the palace. The Tsar came in and he glanced at Masha. There she stood, as lovely as a spring flower, her eyes as bright as the rays of the sun, her face as fair as the sky dome, and the tears rolling down her cheeks like the purest of pearls. Where is your silver saucer and rosy-cheeked apple? asked the Tsar of Masha. And Masha took them out and she rolled the rosy-cheeked apple over the silver saucer. All of a sudden, there came a great ringing of bells, and one after another, Russian cities and towns appeared on the saucer. Into the towns, the regiments streamed with their battle flags flowing and formed into fighting order, the captains standing in front of the lines, the sotniks in front of the hundreds, and the desatniks in front of columns of ten. And such was the firing and shooting, so thick the smoke, that the field of battle was hid from sight as if the day had turned into night. The rosy-cheeked apple rolled over the silver saucer, and on the saucer the sea appeared, rising in waves, with the ship sailing on it as smoothly as swans, the flags waving and the cannon barking, and such was the firing and shooting, so thick the smoke that all was soon hid from sight as if the day had turned into night. The rosy-cheeked apple rolled over the silver saucer, and on the saucer the sky appeared in all its beauty. The bright sun sailed after the pale crescent moon, the stars danced in a ring, and the swans up in the clouds sang their songs. The Tsar was filled with wonder at so rare a sight, but Masha wept and wept and couldn't stop, said she to the Tsar. Take my rosy-cheeked apple and my silver saucer, only pardon my sisters, don't put them to death because of me. And the Tsar lifted her up from her knees and said, Your saucer is of silver, but your heart is of gold. Will you be my own dear wife and a kind and gentle tsaritsa for my tsardom? And as for your sisters, I will pardon them, since you ask me to. There was no need to brew beer or to make wine, for the tsar's cellars overflowed it with both. And so the wedding was held without further ado, and a feast to celebrate it. To say the least, twas a right noble feast. So loud did they play without pause or stop that the stars from the sky began to drop, 
So hard did they dance as I hear tell that they broke their heels and the floor as well. And that, dear friend, is the tale's end.